All right, well, here we go. <coughs> uh, okay, uh, just so you know, we're going to only not even get halfway through this, then, but I'm going to read the whole thing right now. Thank you, Lord. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to you, each one of us, <coughs> grace has been given as Christ appointed no apportion. It, this is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descends is the very one who ascended higher than all the, all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining <clears throat> to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every aspect, respect, me, the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in <coughs> futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separate from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted, by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off <coughs> falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must no longer steal, uh, must steal no longer. <laughs> That's that stuff I got, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, where am I at? I took my eyes off. What number? 28. Sorry, guys. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands. They may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, 
with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Thank you, Father God, for that. Let us take this and get closer to you. Thank you. I love Ephesians. All right, so here we go. Like I said, we're not going to get very far. Uh-oh. Okay, verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Well, God has chosen us to be Christ's represents, res, representation sorry, on earth in light of the truth. Paul challenges us to live lives worthy of the calling we have received. The awesome privilege of being called Christ's very own, this includes being humble, gentle, patient, understanding, and peaceful. People are watching, they watch us. Yeah, can they see Christ in us? And how well we are doing as his representatives? Man, let me tell you guys, the eyes are on you all the time, man. People are just waiting for you to screw up, man. And you know what? We're gonna. And that's just it, man. Thank God for grace because uh, we're gonna mess up, man. But, you know, I, I do want to say this. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Be yourself all the time. Amen. And the thing is, the Lord is going to take that cussing out, going to take all the other stupid stuff that we do. He's going to take it away from you in his time. Sometimes it's immediately. Sometimes it takes a while. But he's going to do it. And, you know, just do the best you can do, you know. Verse 2, be completely humble and gentle. Is that me about the feedback? Is that what that is? Sorry, brother. And gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. No one is ever going to be perfect here on earth, so we must accept and love other Christians in spite of their faults. <coughs> huh? What? <laughs> when we see faults in fellow believers, we should be patient and gentle. Is there someone whose actions are personalities really annoy you? Don't answer that. <laughs> Rather than dwelling on that person's weakness or looking for faults, pray for him or her. Then do even more. Spend time together and see if you can learn to like him or her. Anybody done this? <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, some of the people that I just, they just freaked me out and got on underneath my skin would come to figure out it was all me. I was the problem. I was the one that was taking offense to all this stupidness. And it was like, as soon as I figured that out and learned to let that go, man, then you see all the goodness in that person. You're like, oh, man. So what if they smack while they eat, you know, and scrape their <laughs> fork? Ugh, I'm all right. You know, I'm just saying that, but uh, you know how it is. Verse 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Well, to build unity is one of the Holy Spirit's important roles. He leads <clears throat> because we have to be willing to be led and to do our part to keep the peace. We do that by focusing on God, not on ourselves. Man, I know that gets really hard to do, you know, especially if you've um, got a lot of problems and you always catch yourself praying for yourself all the time. And it's like, oh, man, no, shut up. Let's concentrate on that person. Let's pray for them. Let's put my crap aside, you know. And um, that's what we got to do. And don't try to always put yourself into that situation that they're asking to pray for. Just try to shut up, listen, pray for them, and focus on them. 
Not on you. Amen, Amen, sister. Verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. While all believers in Christ belong to one body, all are united under one head, Christ himself. Each believer has God given abilities that can strengthen the whole body. Our special abilities may seem small or large, but it is yours to use in God's service. Ask God to use your unique gifts to contribute to the strength and health of the body of believers. I'm praying about that. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm going to go through this just a little. One Lord, Jesus Christ. One faith, what Jesus did at the cross. That is our faith. One baptism, our salvation, referring to believers baptized into Christ, which was done at the cross. It has nothing to do with water baptism. Verse 6. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. All right. Well. Me and Andy was chit-chatting about a week ago or so, and it's what kind of led me to this. And uh, I did some diving. So I want to talk a little about the Trinity, because I know the Trinity has got to be the most confusing thing that there is, and we're not going to understand it. So don't be thinking I'm going to give you some kind of knowledge that you're going to get, because I don't think we were made to get it. You know what I'm saying? So, the Trinity is a way of describing God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and Lord over all the universe. God the Son refers to how we believe that God chose to come to earth as a human being in the form of Jesus, the Son of Mary. The idea that God is three in one is confusing to many people. God exists as three persons, yet he is one being. Each person of the Trinity has a separate identity while yet possessing the full nature of God. Jesus is the divine Son of God. This does not mean that Jesus was created by God. We know this because Scripture states that Jesus has always coexisted with God. In John 1, 1 through 3, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, He was with God in the beginning. Verse 3, Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. And while on earth Jesus Himself declared the same. Colossians 1, 15 through 17 says, 15, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. Verse 17, He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. God, the Holy Spirit, is also deity. The Spirit has eternal coexisted with the Father and the Son and was present at the creation in Genesis 1 2. Now the earth, and this is verse 2. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Jesus said of him, verse 16, I will, in John 14, 16, sorry guys, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Verse 17, the spirit of the truth, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you and in 
verse 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus called the coexisting Spirit holy because he is the Spirit of the Holy God, the third person of the Godhead. Rest assured that as you seek to know God, you will feel the presence and promptings of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. And teach them, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And I love this here. This is all three at, at the same place, same time. Luke 3, 21 and 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open. Verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Man, that, that's a hand clap right there, man. I'm telling you. Thank you, Father God. You know, I, I try my best to show you in Scripture where it's at. Man, I'm telling you, it would take hours and hours and hours of going through all the Scripture that has to do with the Trinity. And the word Trinity and nothing like that is in the Bible. It is all what we believe. All right. Back to Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed it. Listen to this. This is very important. Grace is a single word definition of the gospel, the good news of God, offering salvation to sinful and unworthy mankind. God is the God of grace because he is a God who freely gives. His giving has nothing to do with anything we have done, but it is unearned and undeserved. You cannot work your way into grace. Grace was given to us. And man, when you screw up, remember that. Thank God for God's grace. He still loves me because I'm a complete screw-up. And you are going to mess up daily. I hate to tell you. If you don't, woohoo! tell me how you're doing it, man. I want to know, man. Because I screw up daily. Verse 8, this is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. Through his crucifixion and resurrection, Christ conquered Satan and death, and in triumph returned to God those who were once sinners and prisoners of Satan, gave gifts to his people. He distributes the spoils throughout the kingdom after his ascension came all the spiritual gifts empowered by the Spirit who, who was then sent. Thank you, Jesus. Send in the Holy Spirit, man. And you're going to know when you got the Holy Spirit in you. I believe when you are listening to this and you get it, mm -hmm. that's when you got it. And it's going to be sitting there telling you, Hi, Johnny. I got to see little Johnny back there. She's my newest little volunteer. I love her. Thank you, honey. <laughs> and um, verse 9. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower <laughs> earthly regions? Well, the lower earthly regions may be, number one, the earth itself, lowly by comparison to heaven. Number two, the grave. Or, number three, Hades. Many believe Hades is the resting place of souls between death and the resurrection. Um, however, we understand it. Christ is Lord of the whole universe, past, present, and future. Nothing or no one is hidden 
from him. The Lord of all came to earth and faced death to rescue all people. No one is beyond his reach. That should make us feel really good for our loved ones. Uh -huh. Right? Amen. Verse 10. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. After the Lord ascended, having fulfilled all prophecies and all his divinely ordained redemptive tasks, he gained the right to rule the church and to give gifts as he was then filling the entire universe with his divine presence, power, and blessing. And could you, you know, me and my wife, I'm, I'm just going down a rabbit hole real quick. We were driving yesterday and she goes, you know, have you ever thought about the spirit realm? How, you know, like it's all around you. Do you ever like imagine like that building right there, there's one over there and all that, you know, and I'm looking at her, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Could you imagine what the spirit realm did when Jesus Christ was crucified and then risen? Oh, man. I bet that was a serious something going on right there. You know, that I'm sure the people that were there, they seen things, but uh, I just think that's amazing. I bet the devil was very angry. Yes. <laughs> Verse 11 and 12. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Well, the Holy Spirit has given each Christian special gifts for building up the church. Now that we have those gifts, it is crucial to use them. We need to ask ourselves, are we using the gifts God has given us? If you know what your, gift, your gifts are, look for opportunities to serve. If you don't know, ask God to show you, perhaps with the help of your Christian friends then, as you begin to recognize your special area of service, use your gifts to strengthen and encourage the church. That's all of us right there. We all have a gift. And, you know, like I, I've seen, some people are really good at washing dishes and some aren't. <laughs> I'm no good at that. And I, I'll take either one. Yeah. I love y'all. Verse 13, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son, of God and become mature, attaining, <clears throat> attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. God has given his church an enormous responsibility to make disciples in every nation. This involves preaching, teaching, healing, giving, administering, building, and many other tasks. If we had to fulfill these commands as individuals, we might as well give up without trying. It would be impossible. But God calls us as members of his body. Some of us can do one task. Some can do another. Together we can obey God more fully than any of us could alone. It is a human tendency to overestimate what we can do by ourselves and to underestimate what we can do as a group. But as the body of Christ, we can accomplish more together than we could, than we would, we would dream possible working by ourselves. Working together, the church can express the fullness of Christ. It takes all of us, guys. I mean it. I believe all of us get together and we pray for things. Yeah. Things are going to happen. <laughs> Amen. There's going to be chains breaking off. There's going to be healing. There's going to be things happening. I truly believe that. I love y'all. Verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and wind of teaching and by cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Christ is the truth. I love this. In John 14, 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth 
and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the Holy Spirit who guides the church is the spirit of truth. And John 16, 13 says, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Satan, by contrast, is the father of lies. And John 8, 44 says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Well, as followers of Christ, we must be committed to the truth. This means both that our words should be honest and that our actions should reflect Christ's in integrity. Speaking the truth in love is not always easy, convenient, or pleasant, but it is necessary. If the church is going to do Christ's work in the in the work, yeah, sorry, my writing is hilarious. I'm surprised I can read it. Verse 15, and we're getting close. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. When in describing the mature Christian, Paul says that one of the marks is speaking the truth in love. This sounds so simple, but it seems so hard for us to do. Some of us are fairly good at speaking the truth, but we forget to be loving. Oh, snap. Some of us are good at being loving, but we don't have it in us to level with, our, with others if the truth is painful. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that one for a minute. The instruction here is to do both. Speak the truth. Do it in a loving manner. Think of the trouble we would spare ourselves if we followed this practice, especially in the church. When we have a problem with another believer, don't go to someone else with it. Go directly to that person and speak the truth in love. Don't be gossiping. Verse 16, I think I'm closing with this one, yeah. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Some Christians fear that any mistake will destroy their witness for the Lord. They see their own weaknesses and they know that many non-Christians seem to have stronger character than they do. How can we grow up into Christ? The answer is that Christ forms us into a body, into a group of individuals who are united in their purpose and in their love for one another and for the Lord. If one of us stumble, the rest of the group is there to pick him or her up and help him or her walk with God again. If an individual sins, he or she can find restoration through the church. You ready for this? I know a lot of you guys know this too. In Galatians 6, 1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourself or you also may be tempted. Well, as part of Christ's body, do reflect part of Christ's character and carry out your special role in his work. Man, I'm stopping here. And we'll pick up the rest next week. But um, figure out your gift. Pray to the Lord, say, Lord, what is it, something that I can do for you to further your kingdom, you know? And if it's not, if you can't figure it out, and just start telling people that Jesus loves them, or hey, can I pray for you? 
you need prayer, you know, just start with that. Mm -hmm. You may end up being an amazing prayer warrior, and that might be your gift. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know. I mean, it doesn't have to be spectacular, you know. And like I said, I tell you all the time, if you're going to crochet, crochet for Jesus. You know, there's a way that you can get together in your little club or put together a club in something that you like doing and you can talk about the Lord and, you know, and have fellowship with other, other believers, you know. And I love you guys. I'm just going to stop there. Love you, Chad. Man, you guys are awesome with that response. But, uh, I do, uh, I want everybody just ask the Lord to use you. Ask Him into your mind and your heart and to take your life and to use you to glorify Him. And the hardest thing of all is to get that selfishness out of you because man that is hard because when we're all users it's all about me how can you help me get what I need you know what I mean yep you need to kick that to the curb get rid of it get rid of self concentrate on somebody else you know your loved ones man try to get them saved you know, and if they won't listen to you, man, just be praying constantly. Lord, put somebody in their path that they will listen to. Because, you know, they don't want to hear nothing from mom and dad. You know, you just, they know more than you know. That's true. <laughs> you guys are dumb. You're old. You don't know. You know, but let me tell you, you just pray. So, Lord, put somebody in their path to tell them about Jesus Christ. That's all you can do. And keep on praying. All right, I want to hear some praise reports. Which side are we starting with? Go, girl. Um, so, <clears throat> we have a report this Wednesday. Okay. Um, we're doing pretty well, you know. Uh, yes. Just give us in your prayers. Yes. Uh, oh, my arm brace is going. Yay! 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 That's huge, huh? Yeah, I mean, I've had it on Sleeping with that stupid thing? Man. No, no, I can take it off. <laughs> oh, okay, good. I mean, I've got a Heck of a tan line. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up with a bar in print across your face. Yeah, that's face. happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> what happened to you? Oh, I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. That's great. We're going to be praying for you, honey, for you guys. Okay, I've seen some more. Yes, honey. Me? Yes, ma'am. I brought my sister to church with you. Hi, sister. Hi, yeah. sister. Yes. Woohoo! Yes, baby. Chuck. I like your hat. Everything that you all lived in me, and I put one for God, I would not be here. That's right, honey. That is right. God keeps me moving. That's right. Sometimes. It's too much. Yeah. <laughs> but I pray, I pray, I talk to God all the time. That's right. And you know, you said something, and I think the secret in there is keep moving. Yes. Keep moving. Yeah. All right. I see no. Yes, Charlie. I'd like to thank the Lord uh, for taking my addiction away. Amen, brother. I was addicted to. Xanax, that was in the hassle pan. I couldn't go out and function with that. I yeah. thought I needed one. Yeah. Well, on Saturday, I ran out and I couldn't find any. Yeah. So I just prayed to the Lord to take that addiction out of Man. me. And it was a rough that couple is, of days. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, but now I, I, I pray not to stop. So everybody. over here before we skip oh, oh wait whoa. okay we we'll start up front here uh, I just am thankful that I have a job that respects my faith and Amen. 
I worked before church and I worked after church, but yeah. they give me church off. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. That is awesome. <laughs> There's a there's a couple amount of people that's left the center this week, and I just want to ask for prayers oh, yes. for them to be watched over to make sure that they stay on the right path and yeah. that they have the higher power with them all the time. With all the okay. Yeah, I just want to yes. ask for prayers for everybody. Yes. And that they're not alone. Yes, honey. Um, I also have court this Wednesday, so I'd like to pray for that as well. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Got it. Yeah, Charlie. I'd like to uh, pray for Ryan. Are you moved in? No. Yeah, okay. Last week, it's my coming. sister told me to help this with my ex girlfriend. Yeah. And what, I never even slept in, slept in there. Yeah. And I let her stay there. She's been there for a week. And yesterday was about my living. So I got to find yeah. somewhere that will take her. Because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she got the cops coming and everything yesterday. Oh, no. She was out in the park last That's week. not a good way to start, and man. I'm like, they, yeah. didn't, they didn't even come near me. They just, I went next door. In my apartment. Shut the door! <laughs> like, Dave's not here. I'm still on the couch. Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap, I can't take it. I can't. I've prayed. And she's like, she's a Jehovah Witness. And she's yeah. just, just her and that is just people in there. We need to be praying for her. Yeah. 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 Please yes. pray for Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. So another hand up over there. Before we skip over to this side. Oh yeah, go ahead, John. Say what you want to say. I'm sorry. Uh, if anybody's interested in an adult Bible study, uh, First Christian Church, right down on Passion Play Road, that starts at nine fifteen, and it's over before the church starts here. Yeah. They're doing it on the Apostles right now, so. Anybody's interested? They're, they're a good church. That's good. Yeah, them are. Um, that's where three of our cake ladies go to church. <coughs> they make good cakes. Yes, honey. Okay. Amen, honey. I love you. God bless you, Sharon. God bless you. Okay. See one over here. Oh, uh -oh hold on, brother. Go ahead, honey. Yeah. I just want to praise the Lord for His grace. Amen. And <clears throat> give you a little story about it. Yesterday, I had a friend that was taking me places. I lost my billfold. Mm. And I can't find it. It's in my house somewhere. <laughs> and so he volunteered to take me around, you know, to run errands and stuff, and loan me money to get the things that I needed. And we were on the way home, and friend of his called him and said that he got a new chair and wanted to know if anybody wanted the old chair. And I'm like, I do, I do. Because I've been wanting one, a recliner for a while. And so he gave it to me. And we got to Walmart and we pulled in. We're a white pickup with a chair in the back. There's another white pickup with a chair in the back. And that guy, that driver, came over to my friend and said, do you want this chair? And, you know, I mean, it was just a blessing. So now you got two chairs? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Did you find your wallet? Not yet. Not yet, but I'm okay. still praying about it. Amen. <laughs> Love you, honey. Anybody else? Yes, honey. I just want to thank the Lord that the kids are here with us today. Oh. And Frank and I got to have them this weekend. Um, my son Shane and his wife Lori and. And this is Elias down here. So. Good to see you, Frank. Love you, brother. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Said that again. Okay. All right, Pro Warriors, get up here. I um I also um would like to ask for prayer for my wife. Yeah. And um
anybody else new prayer? Did anybody that wanted to, that didn't get to give their praise report this week, got one? Left off over here somewhere. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. 
are trying to get Bibles taken. I was oh, I know. the Satan Bible. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we won't, let's not even start that. We'll go down a huge oh. rabbit hole. I am going to close in prayer. And please, before um, I pray, please um, stay with us, eat, have some fellowship, and uh, get to know your neighbors and your body. Because look, this is the body of Christ right here. Yes, it is. So we need to get to know each other. And you know, and what I've noticed is that's that's how you get help. It's like uh, I, I don't even. It's it's like a deal that we help each other out. You know, it's like, hey man, I need this. You know, and that, or I'm looking for somebody to help me do this and that. I see that every day around here. Yep. And um, and that's the thing. We got to help each other out, and we get to know each other. You know, and that's our time. We get to witness with that people, that person. You know, so. I good? Yes. Yeah, what I love most about this place, Chuck, is where everyone that I have met in this town is willing to help one another out eventually ends up. I just yeah. love this place. Yes, really. I'm 86 years old. Nuh uh. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, now I'm, gonna, now I'm going to give you the good side. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> I have done more in this year than I've been here than I have in my entire 86 years. Wow. And it's because of people like you who have given me the Hi, friend. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. And half of them, I don't know their names, but we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know their name, yeah. ask their name. If, you can, if you're too fast to do that, say, hi, how are you? <laughs> and if you're, uh, if you're like us, that our memory is uh, kind of short, <laughs> we might ask you your name quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> don't be offended. We love you, Norman. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. staring at the debris and having panic attacks and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the good thing that came out of it for him is that an apartment they were waiting for that wasn't going to be open till July they moved it forward and now they can move in next week so, oh nice but so pray for the family too yeah. I don't know what Lost they're doing yet, yeah. It was a big building, right? Yeah, yeah it was Just a building, the whole yeah. building. So whole whole family. Yeah. Yeah, it was a building that has six apartment complex, three levels. But thank God nobody got hurt. No, not that we know of. No pets. No. no some pets. Oh, some pets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Take all that back. All right. I'm going to do it. All right. Do it. Go. One, two, three. I'm praying right now. <laughs> Uh, I love you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for this congregation. They are awesome, Father God, and they love you. We all love you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for being with us today in this time that we need you so much, Lord, and we're so thankful. Lord, we ask you to bless the food that we're going to eat, bless the fellowship that we're going to have, and give us a safe trip home. And let us have a great time. And Father God, we just love you so much. We ask you just to put the Holy Spirit in us, Lord, to guide us, to show us what we need to do in life, Lord, and how to do it, Father God. We praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 All right, let's have a party. Woo! Oh, <laughs>